92.7 WOBM. Good morning, Sean Michaels with you. And joining us right now, it is our uh, just a, a complete privilege to have with us the director of the Pixar animated short Lava, which many of you have seen this summer. Uh, James Ford Murphy, or we're going to call him Jim today if he doesn't mind. Uh, Jim joins us this morning to talk about this project. Good morning. Good morning, Sean. How are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. And I think that, you know, the movie Pixar's hit uh, Inside Out um, had its short, as do all Pixar movies, and you were involved with Lava. Um, I got to start off by asking, why a volcano? You know, I mean, ever since I was a kid, I've I've been fascinated with volcanoes. And, you know, I think volcanoes are so iconic all over the world. And um, I just thought it'd be a fun, fun topic to have volcanoes as characters. Now, when you start, short. when you started with that, Jim, and you started with the volcano, did you automatically go to Polynesian theme? Did that automatically jump into your mind? Like, it, it, it sort of did. You know, when I was a kid, I, I, I loved Hawaii. You know, I grew up in Detroit, but I had this tremendous fascination with Hawaii, and. When I got married, my wife and I honeymooned on the Big Island in Hawaii, and that was really my first time seeing Hawaii as well as an active volcano. And, you know, so since that moment, I've just been in love with Hawaii and and active volcanoes. And then several years ago, my wife and I were watching an episode of ER, and it featured Israel Kamakabevoli's version of Over the Rainbow. And when I heard that rendition of that song that I knew from The Wizard of Oz, I was just absolutely mesmerized by the power and the beauty of this simple yet hauntingly gorgeous uh, rendition that um, Iz did. And I never forgot that. So when it came down to thinking about uh, ideas for shorts, I thought, you know, what if I could write a song that makes me feel the way that song does and feature in a Pixar short film about Hawaii and volcanoes, and so it all kind of came from combining all those ingredients. Yeah, that version of um, uh, Over the Rainbow was just, un- with the ukulele, just had something to it. And, and that is, I think you succeeded in what you were trying to do, because it does have that, it, it, that, that sound really does have a, it resonates, doesn't it? It really does. You know, I just think it's so romantic and so hypnotic and and, and kind of intoxicating in its in its beauty. And the other thing is, you know, the over the rainbow, in in, in uh, you know, it's a combination of o- over the rainbow and what a wonderful world. But over the rainbow is from the Wizard of Oz, and it's the song that Dorothy sings at the beginning of the film, and it's a song of hope and longing for something more than her miserable, misunderstood life in Kansas. And and I think that's another, like, just the lyrics you know, of that song are just so emotional and powerful that, you know, to hear is kind of reinterpret it as a Hawaiian song was just something I, I never forgot. Yeah, it, really, it truly is. And I, and I think you did this with this here. Let me ask you, uh, why has the short become so popular, do you think? Now, I look forward to the short when I go to a Pixar feature as much as I do the feature. Why do you think the short has become a thing of its own now? It's got its own little like cult following, if you will. I think because, you know, I think the shorts have so much variety, you know, that we've, we've done so many shorts that cover such a broad range of, of ideas and, and topics. And they're, they're just like great little hors d'oeuvres and, you know, the, the short is such a part of our culture and our legacy that it's something that we, we take very serious and, you know, something that we really love to treat the audiences to. And I think by, by doing so, we've really created this, this sense of expectations and, and looking forward to the shorts as much as the features. Yeah, we're talking with uh, James Ford Murphy. He is the director of the Pixar animated short Lava. Of course, that is being seen with Pixar's feature Inside Out. Uh, If I could, real quick, Jim. Jim joined Pixar back in 1996. You've worked as an animator on some of the greats like Bugs Life, Toy Story 2, uh, also Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, Ratatouille. Uh, James served as the supervising animator for the Academy Award-winning short for The Birds. James was also the director of the Golden Globe-winning feature Cars. If I put you on the spot and said to you, do you have a favorite Pixar character? Uh, could you do it? Um, 
Probably not. I, I probably don't have a favorite character. I mean, what I love as an animator is getting to animate different characters because it allows you to, like, really express yourself in different ways. And it's actually fun when you're on a film to work on different characters because it gives you kind of variety on that project. For instance, on A Bug's Life, I animated a lot of Dot, you know, who is the, the little yes. uh, the little sister. Yeah. You know, which is, a, that, that's a whole, you know, that's kind of a mindset as an animator or as an actor. And then I animated a lot of Hopper, who was the villain. And I loved having the variety. So you do a bunch of Hopper shots and you kind of be in that zone. And then you got to completely switch gears and, and animate Dot. And that's what I love, you know, about all the different things are, you know, I animated a lot of Dash in, in The Incredibles, you know, when he's running on the water and oh, being yeah. very, you know, athletic and physical. And, geez, how much fun is that? And then got to animate, you know, some of Helen, the mom, yeah. and some of her, her more, you know, I loved emotions. her. Yeah, they, they were great. They were great. Two of my favorites, if I had to pick, would be Woody, which I know everybody says, oh, well, Woody's so huge. But Mike Wazowski was another one that I loved uh, from Monsters, Inc. with Billy Crystal. Oh, yeah. And I tell you, in, in, in both those instances, it's, you, you can really see how much the actors bring to these characters. Yeah. And, you know, in both cases, we really study the recording sessions of the actors, like Tom Hanks and, and Billy Crystal, and really look at the nuances of, you know, how they're gesturing, you know, in, in their performances or what their facial expressions, you know, how they're changing and, and moving. And that's that's really fun, too, to... Ha- to how these characters evolve through the um, you know the personalities of what the character actors or the the voice talent brings to the characters. Well, it is truly fantastic. As we wrap up, uh, any hints as to anything that's in the uh, that you could see in the distance, or is that all Pixar secret, top secret? They'd have to take you out and leave you on a deserted island if you let it out. Yeah, it, it would. It would be all of a sudden I'd, I'd show up missing. <laughs> You'd be if out there with them. To... They'd be dropping you in the volcano. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Listen, if you haven't seen Lava, you have to go see it. It is featured uh, with the Pixar uh, feature Inside Out. Both are great. Both are worth going to see. Uh, they're still out in theaters this summer. Uh, we want to thank you, Jim. You have a great job. Please continue to bring us these family classics. My kids grew up with you and your work, and we hope to see these years to years to come. Thank you, Sean, and thank you so much for having me on your show. It's been my absolute pleasure. Thanks so much. There he is, James Ford Murphy. Thanks, Jim. Uh, part of Pixar and, of course, Lava in theaters. Here's a little snippet of Lava. A long, long time ago, there was a volcano Living all alone in the middle of the sea He sat high above his bed Watching all the couples play and wishing that he had someone too.